Your dreams are bigger, bolder, and more badass than the life you're living now. But something just keeps getting in the way. Join certified coach and former therapist Diane Wingert for the Driven Woman podcast. She'll show you how to get rid of whatever is holding you back so you can stop spinning your wheels and up-level your life. Get ready to hop in and buckle up. This is the Driven Woman podcast, and we're heading for the fast lane. In the past few years, I have witnessed what seems to be an explosion of people choosing the entrepreneurial path and lifestyle, especially women. Now, maybe it's just my perception. After all, this is the road I've taken, so naturally most of the people I come into contact with on this road are fellow entrepreneurial types, and we could get into a debate about the definition of an entrepreneur. After all, Seth Godin, the prolific blogger and marketing pundit, would say that many people calling themselves entrepreneurs today are actually freelancers or independent professionals or small business owners. But the Center for American Entrepreneurship defines an entrepreneurial organization as one whose primary mission is growth, not merely providing a means of self-employment or being one's own boss. So once you strip away the semantics, the facts remain. A growing number of people, especially women, are opting for the unstable, insecure, risky, and exciting path of working for themselves, either in partnership or collaboration with others, or like me, flying solo. And most of them would choose to do it again, even if they aren't experienced the level of success they set out for. This is a fascinating phenomenon when you consider how the human brain has programmed us for millions of years to stick with the herd as a means of survival. Think about it. Choosing the self-employment path typically means financial instability and insecurity, social and emotional isolation, added stress and pressure on romantic and intimate relationships, and increased challenges with mental health. And who hasn't heard the often quoted statistic from the Small Business Administration that 80% of small businesses fail within the first five years? Why would any reasonably sane person choose to go their own way? Or... Could it be there's something fundamentally different about those who choose this path? Could there be an entrepreneurial personality type? Now, let me be clear on this point. I don't believe there's only one kind of person who is destined to be an entrepreneur, nor do I believe that all entrepreneurs are alike. There are many different paths to entrepreneurship and many different personalities that find a way to succeed in this lifestyle. But what I do believe is that there are personality attributes or characteristics that make it more likely a person will choose to be an entrepreneur sooner or later. Most entrepreneurs have several of these traits. Some have most and some have all. I am doubtful that many successful entrepreneurs have none or few of these traits. And of course, having entrepreneurial role models, mentors, and support from family and friends can make up for having fewer of these attributes and greatly enhance the likelihood for success for those who have many of them. So, what are these magical attributes that would make it more likely someone will become an entrepreneur? Let's start with one. Awareness. Awareness simply means being dialed in to what's happening around you and inside of you. Paying attention. Noticing things. Like what kinds of things people are interested in and why. How things work. Observing what changes and what stays the same. This kind of awareness creates an endless web of opportunity for discovering unmet needs and generating possibilities for creating something to meet them. What frustrates people? What brings them joy? What products, services, and systems are effective and efficient? And which ones generate endless customer service requests? Well, is it possible to increase the attribute of awareness? I think so. The easiest, well, let's put it this way. Maybe it's the simplest, but not the easiest way. Put away your phone. Being aware and paying attention to what is happening around you instead of being fixated on that small screen of your device will undoubtedly allow you to cultivate greater attunement with everything going on around you. There's no doubt it will cause anxiety at first. Let's face it, we've all become a little bit too obsessed and dependent on our electronic pacifiers. But if we can put them away for just a little while and observe, I mean really observe, your awareness will increase. And if what you want is to be even more intentional, 
Try observing other people using products and services, and then try to determine their emotional state. Are they relaxed? Are they joyful, angry, scared, resentful, tense, apathetic? Good. You are cultivating awareness. Another attribute most entrepreneurs have is curiosity. Lots of things don't work that well, and nobody seems to question them. Lots of products, processes, and procedures are inefficient, clumsy, disorganized, and fail to achieve their stated objective. And yet, people just continue to buy them, use them, follow them, support them, and even indoctrinate others to do the same. This drives me nuts! If we don't question why things are being done the way they are, it's close to impossible to come up with new solutions. And new solutions are what drives entrepreneurial ventures. So get curious. You don't necessarily have to start going around grilling people about their stuff and whether it meets their needs and if they wouldn't mind if someone came up with that kind of intention. I wouldn't mind, actually. You could just use your powers of increased awareness coupled with curiosity by observing and asking. You can even ask in your head or out loud. Sadly, our culture squashes the natural curiosity that children are born with, and we are all institutionalized through education and religious organizations to stop being so curious. It's inconvenient for the adults in charge when kids are curious, so we start shutting them down in order to manage the group and stick to the schedule. But if you want to be an entrepreneur, you need to dig up that curiosity, dust it off, and take it out for a spin. You can absolutely restore it to its former glory more quickly than you can even imagine, and it will make you a better entrepreneur, guaranteed. The next attribute, risk-taking. Risk-taking is an absolute requirement for the entrepreneurial journey. You will never feel completely prepared or totally certain that you are taking the right course of action, that it's the right timing, that you have the right expectations, the right goals, the right plans. You are simply going to have to develop the ability to take action in the face of uncertainty, no matter how much anxiety that provokes. Now, that doesn't mean we should all just wing it and fly by the seat of our pants, flinging us into action without plan or preparation. That might be exciting, and could be successful at least some of the time, but nothing beats strategy combined with testing, testing, testing. So the third attribute to cultivate if you want to be an entrepreneur is the willingness to take risks and live with the discomfort of uncertainty. Some people are just naturally more comfortable with this, but all of us can develop the skill of taking strategic action that involves risk. If you want complete predictability, you need a job, not a business. Then again, You can get fired or laid off with a job. So there's risk there too. How good were you during elementary school fire drills? Could you do the stop, drop, and roll quicker than the other kids? This is good news because resiliency is another attribute and a fantastic quality to possess as an entrepreneur. Launching, growing, and running your own business is full of ups and downs, twists and turns, victories and defeats. Things hardly ever go as expected, and the ability to bounce back from the unexpected, from disappointment, and to pivot when your calculations were a little or a lot off is an absolutely necessary skill to maintain the pace of making good decisions on the fly. Mental health challenges of entrepreneurship have always been on my radar, not only because I am an entrepreneur who works with entrepreneurs, but because I was a psychotherapist for over 20 years before becoming a coach. I simply can't ignore such an important, but frankly, rarely talked about subject. And the more resilient we are, the better our mental health will be, regardless of the actual stressors or challenges in our life and business. Developing resiliency as an entrepreneur is a lot like lifting weights. It requires doing things that are harder than we can currently manage, like lifting a weight that's a little heavier than we can currently lift. But as we accept the possibility of failure going in and continue to press on, Entrepreneurs that don't take failure too personally won't suffer as much as those who do. We simply have to accept that failure is part of the game. So to get your resiliency muscles to grow, we have to continue to take on challenges and work around self-talk regarding failure. Telling yourself that you're an idiot or not cut out for this when things go south is not only not going to help you figure out what to do next, it's going to ramp up your stress hormones and actually make it impossible for you to make a good decision, at least until you calm down. A few deep breaths and a quick walk around the block. These days with the quarantine, it's going to have to be a walk around inside the building. 
will allow you to be calmer and to think more clearly. We have to be kind to our mind. You're not a loser because you made a mistake. You're learning. Always, always learning. And as long as you stay in the game, you still have the chance of winning. But bullying yourself will never get you there. And speaking of getting you there, what will get you there in terms of entrepreneurial success faster and with a lot more fun than white knuckling it is to ask for help early, often and ongoing. Asking for help, actually even recognizing that we need it, is something many entrepreneurs, including myself, struggle with. Lots of us tend to be extremely independent, self-sufficient, and even lone wolf types who would rather have a root canal without anesthesia than admit they can't do something on their own. Now make no mistake, you might be able to reach your goals without getting help, but it's like walking 10 miles with a rock in your shoe. You may still get where you're going, but it will take you longer and be twice as painful as necessary. Hey, I try to avoid having regrets. After all, you can't change the past, so why regret it? That being said, I wish I had been willing to ask for and get help much, much sooner in my own entrepreneurial journey. Eventually, I realized it was all about vulnerability and being unwilling to confront feeling vulnerable and dependent. Once I changed my beliefs about needing help, asking for help, and receiving help, I picked up entrepreneurial speed big time. Now, I'm constantly on the lookout for where I might be working too hard and where I can get help through outsourcing, getting some kind of training, or just eliminating something because it isn't necessary. So let me help you cut years off your learning curve in a single sentence. You ready? Get help. Get help. Get help early, often, ongoing. You need it. We all need it. There is nothing wrong with needing it. Now go get it and watch your stress levels drop and your momentum double. While I have identified with many of the traits mentioned so far, this last one is not something I was born with or come by naturally. The trait I'm talking about now is persistence. Now, I was by no means a quitter, but I was definitely someone who had trouble sticking it out when the going got tough. And by tough, I mean being able to keep my eye on the prize through the dull patches and avoiding giving in to the lure of shiny objects that just kept popping up in my peripheral vision. Something I had to learn the hard way about being an entrepreneur is that after the initial excitement of giving birth to my business baby was that I had to raise the damn thing. And persistence is all about understanding that you are playing the long game. Unless, of course, you are a serial entrepreneur and you get to do the fun part, in my humble opinion, and then cut and run, hopefully with a big fat check. If you are a mother, You know what I'm talking about. From the moment you announce your pregnancy to the day you have that little bundle in your arms, you are the center of attention. People are excited for you. They are full of helpful and not so helpful advice and willing to give you support, resources, all the things. Once your adorable little newborn becomes a toddler, a preschooler, a third grader, and God forbid a teenager, all that interest, support, and offers wither and die. Well, I got news. It's the same thing with your fledgling business. And here's the part no one wants to talk about. Business can be boring. Not all of it, but long stretches of it. Kind of like raising a kid. Sometimes you love them and can't imagine your life without them. And sometimes you just wish you could run away and seriously question your sanity for having gotten into all of this. It's no different with raising kids and having a business. And in order to make it through the boredom and the frustration and intermittent failures, you really have to nurture the quality of persistence. Now, like many entrepreneurs, I happen to have ADHD. And for those who are unaware, that stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, which means persistence is a challenge for me because I'm all about the shiny. I'm very easily distracted by anything new and novel. In other words, not by my teenage business. Now, there are ways to get around this, such as being a serial entrepreneur, or in my case, rebranding and pivoting in my niche while staying in the same business of coaching and consulting every few years, but you really have to weigh the pros and cons. Persistence can be explained like this. You will get further down the field by kicking the same soccer ball six times than you will get by kicking six different soccer balls one time each. 
Now, I have worked with a coach on this and have absolutely improved over time, but I've also accepted that this is the way I am and I no longer see it as a problem. I just had to come up with simple, sustainable strategies for managing my distractibility and shining object syndrome so that it no longer threatens my existing business. You want to know how I do it? I allow myself to entertain the notion of changing lanes all the time. I collect dozens, if not hundreds, of ideas from alternative apps I could be using in my business instead of the ones I'm using now, to new business models, new products, new services, collaborations, even entirely different businesses. When I think of them or come across them, I set a timer and I give myself five minutes, sometimes ten, to bask in the seductive glow of whatever new shiny object that has captured my attention. Then I bookmark it if it's a website or write a brief description or hammer out a mind map if it's a concept, a framework, or an idea that just happened to spring from my brain. And then I park it in a folder on my desktop. I have multiple folders. One is called blog fodder, for example, and it captures blog ideas that I can either come back to later or not. Once a quarter, on a day when my energy and motivation are low, but I still want to be somewhat productive, I will spend some time, usually no more than an hour, scanning the folders, reviewing the bookmarks, pruning out the ones that aren't as exciting as they were the first time I saw them. And each time I do, I can recommit to the path I'm on, to the projects I'm working on, to the business model I have committed to, and the goals I am currently pursuing. It's my way of acknowledging my shiny object syndrome, but also keeping myself on track. I have tried to suppress my need to explore and contemplate changing lanes, but I found that the more I try to resist this tendency, the stronger the urge to jump gets. If you have ADHD or you just happen to have this tendency and the biggest challenge to your success is enduring the inevitable boredom that is part of any venture beyond the startup stage, you're going to need to find some strategies of your own in order to persevere. So there you have it. The six traits I believe all entrepreneurs need in order to succeed. They are again, awareness, curiosity, risk-taking, resiliency, asking for help, and persistence. If you already have them all and they are well-developed and leveraged, hooray, you are most likely rocking it in your business and your life. If there's room for growth in one or more, Why don't you take a few minutes right now to brainstorm on how you can ramp them up? You've been listening to the Driven Woman podcast with Diane Wingert. Want more straight talk and strategy each week that will take you from spinning to winning? Don't forget to hit subscribe in your podcast player so you won't miss a single episode. Then head on over to the Driven Woman free and private Facebook group community. See you there.